going to start this lecture with the analysis and interpretation of financial information. Now guys, if you are required to analyze and interpret financial information of a company, you are going to have to perform various different ratio calculations, and then in addition to that, you are going to have to comment on those ratio calculations. So for the purposes of this course, it's important to note that we have six different ratio categories. First, we look at profitability ratios. Then we look at capital structure and solvency ratios. We then move on to liquidity or working capital ratios. We look at return on invested capital ratios, financial market or investor ratios, and finally, cash flow related ratios. So you guys will see over the next couple of pages, I've included all of these different ratio categories as well as all of the ratios that fall within these categories. Now it's very important, you must study all of the ratios in each category as this will not be provided. So what do I mean by this? Guys, at this level, it's highly unlikely that you're going to get to the required and it's going to say, calculate the movements in revenue, calculate the gross profit margin, or calculate the net profit margin, for example. That's too simple at this level. At this level, you are going to get to the required and it's going to say, analyze and interpret the profitability ratios of X, Y, Z. So you need to know which ratios fall in the category profitability so that you know which ratios to calculate. So please make sure when you are studying the ratios, you know which ratios fall in each category. Then please note, all ratios are listed in the order of importance. So guys, if you are required to calculate the profitability ratios for X, Y, and Z, you should start at the top and work your way down. The first ratio is the most important ratio. The last ratio is the least important ratio. Then how do you know how many ratios you should calculate? You should let the mark allocation guide you. The norm is half a mark per calculation. Sometimes you might get lucky, sometimes there is one mark available per calculation, but to be safe, let's rather say half a mark per calculation. So guys, that means if you are required to perform a ratio calculation for both the current year and for the prior year, you'll get half a mark for the current year calculation and another half mark for the prior year calculation. So you can use that as a guide. Then just some important terminology before we get onto the ratio calculations. EBIT is earnings before interest and tax, and EBITDA is earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. Now it's important to note, if you are required to perform any ratio calculations that use either EBIT or EBITDA, you should not include other income in this calculation. And the reason for that, guys, is other income does not form part of an entity's normal operating activities. If the income was a part of the company's normal operating activities, it would be classified as revenue and not other income. So the fact that it's classified as other income means it is not part of the company's normal operating activities. So if you are required to calculate any ratios that use either EBIT or EBITDA, you should not include other income in your calculation. Now guys, at this level, you are never just going to be able to calculate the ratios and then move on. After calculating the ratios, you need to discuss those ratios. And there are a lot more marks available for the discussion than the calculation. Now when it comes to the discussion of ratios, it's very important for you to note, you are not expected to be an expert in any industry. So please, you are not required to go and research different industries. You don't need to be an expert in any industry. What is required from you? You need to have a general knowledge of what is happening in the political and economic world around you. So how do you make sure that you have the required knowledge? I recommend listening to a short five-minute news bulletin on the radio at least once a day. Alternatively, you can also use News24. News24 has really nice short articles that are very helpful. 
Either of these things won't take up a lot of your time, and this is sufficient for you to have an awareness of what's going on in the world around you. Then to ensure that you score maximum marks for the discussion of the ratios that you've calculated, I want you to apply the following framework. And please note, guys, this framework should be used as a trigger or a guide. If you don't have something to discuss, then don't force it. Let's go through the framework and then you'll see what I'm talking about. First, you should interpret the ratio. So let's say, for example, you've calculated the gearing ratio and you now need to discuss the gearing ratio. To interpret the ratio, you simply say, the gearing ratio tells us the percentage of debt that the company has in its capital structure. There's your interpretation done. It doesn't come from the information provided in the question or the scenario. The interpretation comes directly from your lecture notes. You'll see as we go through the different ratio calculations, the interpretation has been included in the lecture notes. So please make sure you study the interpretation so that you know what a certain ratio is trying to achieve so that you are able to interpret the ratio. Now please note guys, you'll see sometimes there aren't any marks available for interpreting a ratio. And that's if the ratio is too simple to interpret. So for example, if you've calculated the movement in revenue, the movement in revenue is the movement in revenue. So there won't be any marks available for interpreting that ratio. The same applies to the gross profit margin or the net profit margin. Those ratio calculations are self-explanatory. The gross profit margin is the gross profit margin. The net profit margin is the net profit margin. So because they are self-explanatory, there are no marks available for interpreting the ratio. You'll see this often applies to profitability ratios. So please note, guys, when you're studying the lecture notes, you'll see if I've included an interpretation, it means it's possible to interpret the ratio. And when you are discussing your ratios, you should also interpret them. If I have not included an interpretation, that means it's because the ratio is too simple, it's self-explanatory, and there won't be any marks available for interpretation. You are then going to compare the ratio to a benchmark. So in other words, compare the current year calculation to prior periods or similar companies if the information is available. So guys, the reason why we do this is you don't know if a ratio is good or bad unless you have something to compare it to. So if you can compare the current year calculation to prior periods, you can see whether the ratio has improved or deteriorated from the prior year. And if you have information relating to similar companies, you can then also see whether the company has performed better or worse than similar companies. Now, please note, when you are benchmarking or making these comparisons, you can't just say that the ratio has increased or decreased. You need to show the examiner that you understand whether the movement is positive or negative. So you need to make sure that you use the correct words. Focus on using words such as improved, deteriorated, better, worse, do not say just increased or decreased. That is not sufficient. Okay, so the words that you should be using over here is improved, deteriorated, better, worse. You can even say positive or negative performance. But you can't just say increase or decrease because that doesn't show the examiner that you understand whether the movement is positive or negative. Then, after comparing to a benchmark, you are going to provide possible reasons. Now, guys, please only provide a possible reason if there is a good reason for the movement. So, again, you are using this framework as a guide. Don't force it. If you can't come up with a good reason, then don't write anything down. So, only provide a reason if there is a good reason for the movement. Then lastly, where performance is negative, you can discuss the likely impact or remedial action. Now please, guys, only discuss this if you can add extra value.
So guys, let's say for example, you've calculated the movement in revenue, and you can see that revenue has deteriorated from the prior year to the current year. So there's been a drop in revenue. That is obviously negative performance. If possible, you should discuss the impact that this will have on the company. So obviously, if revenue is dropping from the prior year to the current year, that will have a negative impact on profitability, on cash flows. If revenue continues to drop, then there's obviously a going concern risk for the company. So that would be the impact. The remedial action is what the company can do to correct this negative performance. So perhaps they need to look at new marketing strategies, Perhaps they need to introduce new products or they need to look at their current product offering and see which products are not profitable, discontinue those products, etc. But that would be potential remedial action. Please, guys, only discuss the impact and remedial action if you can add extra value through this discussion. Don't force it. Don't write down rubbish. It doesn't work. Then... For exam technique, guys, you'll see in all of the lecture examples that I've provided you with, I include all of the headings above. So in the lecture examples, you'll see I have headings for interpret, compare to a benchmark, give potential reasons, discuss the likely impact, discuss remedial action. I include all of those headings in my suggested solution. And the reason why I do that is to show you how the discussion links back to the framework provided above. So I'm trying to show you how the discussion links back to this framework over here. Please note, you should not include the headings in your solution. You should just include the bullet points. All right, so I'm quickly just going to jump to one of the lecture examples. You don't need to open your lecture examples. Just follow what I'm saying over here. You can see I've included all of the headings. Interpret, benchmark to industry average, potential reason, impact, benchmark to prior year. I'm including all of those headings so that you can see how the discussion over here links back to the framework that I provided you with in the lecture notes. However, you should not include these headings in your suggested solution. You should just list the bullet points.